Welcome to episode three of my dive dry road trip. In today's video, I am taking you to a beautiful dive site called Flagpole. I'll be talking about dive planning in currents and introducing you to a sweet little friend called the wolf eel. Vamanos. My name is Sarah and welcome to the Pacific Northwest. I'm taking you on a road trip in my van to dive in different places around the Western United States while I learn more about cold water diving. Join the adventures and scuba lessons each week. It's a little bit crowded in here. Sunrise right in my face. <laughs> I'm like trying to get down into shot and sit on the floor tucked in here. Today is a really exciting day because one of my patrons is actually going to dive with me. He drove in from Montana yesterday like YouTube is such a amazing platform but a lot of times I just don't I don't know who you all are so by having patreon I've actually been able to get to know people and I know that I'm gonna have dive buddies in all of these places where they are <laughs> and some may even come to me it's so cool it's such a weird world that we live in right now <laughs> we won't be diving until the afternoon so I'm going to have a little coffee and do some computer work there we go oh you can see my dishes Shh, that doesn't that doesn't exist my fellow van lifers know that when they go in the sink and you can still put stuff on top of the sink it's not time to do the dishes yet <laughs> this is my homemade oat milk so good and we're doing the coffee french press style and we're somehow doing this in the tiniest space possible in this van. I should probably fold my bed up, but I kind of, I think I'm gonna lay down again. Not sleep, but just like cuddle with Abby. Cause look, sweet girl. You're not even gonna look up? You don't even wanna say hi? Nothing? Oh my gosh. Well, you, you saw it. She's checked out. Oh wow, this is a cute look for me. <laughs> One of the ways to dive here is to check in with Mike's Beach Resort and pay a $20 fee. This gives you access to all of the dive sites around that property as well as full use of the bathrooms, hot water shower, and rinse area at the resort. Flagpole is located a bit of a swim offshore, so the easier way to dive here is definitely by joining a boat trip. So we've been on a wild goose chase trying to find the site. This is insane. This is where I parked. And this gate with this little sign is how you're supposed to know that it is flagpole. Hey, you made it! <laughs> My buddy John got certified when he was in his 20s and then took a long-term break until recently getting back into the sport. He has about 50 dives, is advanced open water, and is training to become a technical diver and photographer. There is the flagpole, and then there is a buoy Right out there, you see the like black buoy? Once again, using the best shoes ever. You'd think that I would learn after one dive that I shouldn't be wearing shoes like this, but I don't. <laughs> it's a little bit windy. We're gonna see if we can cut off the wind over here. So dive plan is to go out to a buoy, swim down. There's supposed to be like a knuckle reef we're going to swim around the Knuckle Reef, and depending on how that dive goes and our air consumption, we're going to stay there or maybe end the dive by navigating up to the shallow reef. That's the plan. We'll see what actually happens. If you do decide to do this dive site from shore, or really any dive site that is less protected from the elements, there are a few things to keep in mind. Tides. In some areas, tides don't really affect the diving all that much, whereas in other places, it changes 
everything. This particular site, since it's further out into the channel, you're more exposed to that water flow. This particular site is best at slack tide. Slack tide is that moment when the tide goes from rising to falling, that little hump is when there's less water movement and maybe even no water movement. That's kind of why it's slack. Could also be the opposite way, right? My hand doesn't bend that way. The dip, right? So if it's going from falling to rising, that little dip is slack tide. And then another important thing when looking at the tide charts is the amount of exchange between peaks. Your high tide could be way up here, your low tide way down here, that means that the current, right, the slope is steeper, the current is going to be stronger. If your high tide is here and your low tide is here, that means that there's less water exchange, so the current is going to be less. The man, the myth, the legend, it's John. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and you've got a nice little wing set up here. How do you like it? So far, so good. I've just had the five dives on it. Oh, wow. So this was a advanced open water gift to yourself. Yep. Sick. Honest feedback on our dive site adventure so far? <laughs> I think it's been pretty cool so far. It helped. It was an icebreaker. We got a good introduction to the people of Washington. We've wandered around a little bit, but now we're at the site. We're going to kit up and go explore this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this guy diving in a semi-dry suit. You're so brave. <laughs> we're doing great. It's a thousand degrees, but we're, we're doing fine. Another thing to consider is wind. Strong wind can completely counter what you expect underwater. And this is what happened to us. At the surface, you may experience a strong current in one direction following the wind pattern, and then underwater experience the total opposite because of the tide. Surface currents can be confusing because they're not always completely noticeable at first. On a long surface swim, make sure to pay attention to the direction of the wind and then clock something on shore to tell you how strong the current is at the surface. That will help you readjust along the swim so that you're able to actually reach your dive site. Because the moment that you overshoot it and you've gone past it and you're trying to go directly into the current, you're never going to get there. We had planned on doing one dive at flagpole and then the second one at octopus hole, but then decided after the debacle of trying to find the dive site, we just wanted to stay at the same spot. At this dive site, you can typically find wolf eels and giant Pacific octopuses. However, the giant Pacific octopus count for my dive dry road trip is still zero. Wolf eels are so freaking cool. <laughs> I was surprised to find out that wolf eels are actually fish. It makes sense because they have fins, but you know, when you look at them and they're just gaping at you from the hole, they really do look like they're related to the moray eel. They look kind of like the old man Muppet guys, you know, that like sit in the theater. They have super ugly faces. This fish got its name because of its long body, powerful jaws, and sharp teeth. It uses these tools to eat sea urchins, fish, squid, crabs, sand dollars, and even clams or mussels. They are orange and purple as juveniles and turn to different shades of brown, gray, and green as they mature. Females are typically more on the brown side. They prefer nooks and crannies in the reef as their home, and they will settle either on their own or with a mate. They can live up to 25 years and can get as big as 41 pounds and eight feet long. They seem to be doing all right in the world of conservation because their only real predators are seals and sharks. People tend to leave them alone because they're not really easy to catch. Lessons of the day. It's best not to underestimate the current, especially if you or someone on your dive team is unfamiliar with diving in currents. Depending on the location of the dive site, you may want to limit your diving to only the raising or falling tide due to dangers of being swept out to sea, far away from your exit point, or any other topographical detail. All in all, we had a great day of diving and getting to know each other. Oh. Moment of truth. We've got this. I believe in you. 
up there. We're not entirely confident. Oh god, I gotta get the gate. All right, we made it up the hard part, I think. Yes! Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> I did nothing. <laughs> it's really funny to me how small the world is and how things like YouTube can bring people together, especially in the diving community. Like, this world is so small. The second that you start getting incorporated into it, the connections are just overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> I look forward to reconnecting with John when I pass through his hometown during my road trip. But for now, the diving adventure continues. Make sure to like this video, leave your question in the comments below, and subscribe for more videos. You can join me on Patreon where we have a nice tight-knit community and it's really growing into a cool space of sharing knowledge and getting together for diving. And don't forget to go to my website to find out how you could join me for diving in Baja in January 20. 23. Hi, sweet girl. See you next time. Oh my goodness. This heat wave has been abusive. Even in the Pacific Northwest, I couldn't believe it. Like, it's been really hot. It should be cooling down soon. I didn't mention it, but my emotional support scuba equipment <laughs> This is my new video light. This thing is so beefy. Have you guys seen this? This is not an ad, but I got a crack in, and this is how I've been able to get all of the nicer video that I've been doing. I'm still shooting on my GoPro 8, so it's kind of funny to like have this fancy light and <laughs> just have this tiny little GoPro there. It's working out for me. I can only make so many investments into my equipment at a time, so that's what I'm shooting on. Oh, I just realized that my hair... <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Stop licking your butt.